China has built a massive nationwide surveillance system to fight the coronavirus. And it might be coming to the U.S. next. Welcome back to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. As if dissidents in China didn't have enough to be worried about. China already had a massive surveillance system. But with the spread of the coronavirus, that system has been pushed into overdrive. Joining me today to discuss this is Greg Barbaccia, an expert in counterintelligence and corporate espionage. He's also a former intelligence sergeant in the U.S. Army. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. So China has a kind of digital Orwellian society that's never been seen before. How has this system been used during the coronavirus outbreak? So what China is doing and what the CCP is doing is they're expanding this already staggering amount of information they collect on their citizens to levels that are truly Orwellian that uh, you wouldn't even believe were possible before. Mm -hmm. So how is this kind of tracking different from what the Communist Party was already doing? So what they were already doing was this kind of blanket surveillance, sucking up everything. Um, they're tracking locations of phones, but now what they're doing is they're analyzing that data in a bit of a different way, kind of seeing who's uh, in what kind of proximity to who else. They're also tracking some things I don't think they've been doing in earnest before, things like uh, temperature readings when people travel. They're looking more closely at where people have traveled. Um, I'm also imagining there's looking at search terms people are using for symptoms of the disease. Hmm. Well, so has it been effective at stopping the spread of the coronavirus? Yeah, so that's a tough one because the Chinese government is arguably the best in modern times at controlling what type of information is coming out of uh, the Great Firewall. So we're, they're saying the numbers are relatively low and they're you know pretending they're doing a great job of containing it. But a lot of what we are seeing leaking doesn't make sense. You're seeing uh, a lot of cell phone subscribe, subscriptions disappear uh, seemingly overnight. These leaked pictures of a lot of urns. So the numbers certainly don't jive with what the Communist Party is giving to the world. Well, so how else might this uh, surveillance system be used by the Communist Party after the coronavirus is over? Yeah, so one interesting thing they're doing is they're kind of showing their hand a little more. Everybody knows, and you know, their citizens are the same, that they're collecting all the information but this quarantine is forcing them to act on it a lot faster, which is having them show their hand to their technical capabilities. So a lot of what happens when you do these type of dragnet uh, technical operations is other data that isn't related to COVID gets picked up. So I wouldn't be surprised. A good example would be there's a couple of people who are known for subversive activities against the government, and they've been hanging out in the same place or let's say cohabitating when that might have not been obvious to the Communist Party before, they're probably going to trip over this type of information and then use it to target people for political means as well. So why is this so important for the regime? Uh, this is important because the only way they could project their power on the international uh, scene is to show that they are able to maintain security of their population, they are able to make their population happy and manufacture all these goods for the whole world. So when they start losing control of that, it makes them look terrible on the international stage. And it hurts the ability they have to control their population. If the citizenry starts to doubt their the Chinese Communist Party's ability to protect them, all of a sudden they're going to start thinking, you know, why are we risking so much and working so hard for this? What we're seeing that is especially interested is the medical and scientific community. When you look at how some of the COVID-19 whistleblowers were discredited and very literally let die, you start realizing that the CCP is not interested in true scientific outcomes. They're only interested in supporting outcomes when they're congruent with the party information lines. So you think this new surveillance system is really a result of the party being even more worried about maintaining its grip on power? Absolutely. I think they are getting a little bit desperate. They wouldn't be using things. We're seeing Facial recognition uh, being used to track people who aren't wearing masks. Something else is very interesting, uh, reports about integrating the thermal imaging and the facial recognition to kind of see who's got a fever. That's interesting technology. It's commodity technology that exists. But the fact that the CCP is letting it get out to all their citizens, citizens at once that they're using it is interesting. They're, they, they seem to be panicking a little, and they're, letting, they're willing to let a little bit more 
um, of what they have under behind the cloak kind of show. So what ramifications might this have? I think um, if there was ever a time for the kind of younger college educated people to get the wool removed from their eyes and see that this party is only concerned with uh, existing in perpetuity, it doesn't really care about the health of the nation and the citizens, they're watching their friends and family die and not be able to get medical care. I think this is coupled with, uh, with the protests we've been seeing in Hong Kong and other places. Now's an interesting time that some sort of uh, uprising could take place. China's also not in a position now to squash something like they were during Tiananmen Square, for example. The international community is just not uh, in a place where they would stand for that. So they're losing a lot of their leverage over the population. Most of that leverage is things are great, things are good, we're providing for you, you're working, the party's happy, why rock the boat? That's changing now. Well, so this whole surveillance system, it's in China. So why should Americans care? Well, Americans should care for a few reasons. One, it's important to know what is going on in China because um, the, the population here, can public opinion can inform our leadership's trade and diplomatic uh, opinions and regulations that are being enforced. This would be difficult to implement for a few reasons in the United States, but it is not impossible. Uh, months ago, you would think it would be crazy that the government would shut down all businesses and force us to stay in our homes to a certain extent. Um, so it's a bit of a slippery slope when public health and national security strings uh, could be pulled. So with uh, some leading experts and even some major Western media praising China's response to the coronavirus, you think it's possible somebody will start suggesting this kind of system in the United States? Um, I think it's already being suggested in some sort of the uh, news outlets you're, uh, we're seeing, but there's a couple of problems uh, for that. It makes sense because, you know, we can't trust people to socially distance, let's say. And does social distancing work? Sure, anecdotally, yes. It goes to reason that diseases uh, proliferate when there's human contact. So if we lock everybody up, it can't proliferate. Uh, it's easy for China to do this because they do not have civil liberties and a constitution to worry about. Um, while the technological capability certainly exists for this type of collection and analysis in the United States, the problem is it's not really legally feasible currently without more emergency edicts, and it's certainly not uh, culturally palatable. Well, U.S. tech companies say that they can keep user data anonymous, so really what is the problem with this kind of tracking in the U.S.? Yeah, it could be done in an academic level for sure. The problem you're going to see, um, and I've done some of these big data analytic uh, problem sets before, where this is most important is in these large, dense cities, the New York City, Los Angeles, things like that. New York City is a great example. That's the epicenter of this right now. New York City is very dense, but it's also a very vertically dense city. So when you're doing this type of analysis, and I'm assuming we're talking about getting terrestrial analysis, you know, somehow compelling a telecom company to share this with the government. It's hard to do that type of geoanalysis because when you're looking uh, at a flat earth from the top down, you and I may look like we're right next to each other, but in reality, you're on um, floor 57 of the high rise and I'm in the basement. So there's a lot more nuance to how this would be carried out in real life. What about the fact that uh, Chinese drone companies like DJI are giving drones to the U.S. to help enforce these social distancing measures? Uh, we should be very concerned about everything DJI. Um, I have worked at places in the past where uh, counter intel for the company was under my purview and we put out blanket, you are not to utilize any of technology from DJI. The Internet of Things is a huge vulnerability now. If you walk around your home and see all the devices that are connected to the Internet that are sending data, 99.9% .9 of them are uh, coming from China. It's very possible that they've been implemented with some uh, you know, appliance in them that could send data back, things like your smart home devices, uh, your routers, your modems, even wearable tech. Uh, very scary what uh, they're able to collect. What would China do with that kind of information? So if you remember a few years ago, China hacked into the uh, Office of Personnel Management's database that holds uh, United States uh, DOD security clearances. So they have uh, names and addresses and a lot of PII of people who are affiliated with the government. Now they're very lucky that everybody is dispersed and everybody's working from home. So um, things like for emails, for example, when you trans 
port and email. There's header information that has the IPs that are attached to everywhere the email bounces uh, during its uh, transport from point A to point B. That used to always be coming from the headquarters of the business or your you know, public office where everybody knows. Now, if China has the ability to, let's say, intercept these emails in transit, now all these emails from these people who are working from home are coming from their home routers. So with the IP information, you could geolocate really, you know, li very literally map uh, all the employees of an entity you're targeting, where they live. Wow. Well, so the coronavirus is a real problem. Where do you draw the line between security and freedom? That age-old argument. Yeah, so this is a, you know, a legal discussion, and it's just one of the most American uh, discussions that have been happening in all sorts of uh, ways since the beginning of the country with the Patriot Act and things like that, the security versus civil liberties. Um, the legal argument would have to be made is if Americans could keep it together and stay in their homes, they, our citizens need to not force the government to have to take this kind of action and declare national states of emergency and martial law and say that by going outside and not social distancing, you're, it's criminal mischief because you're you know, knowingly possibly spreading this disease. Um, so that's what's at stake here. Hmm. Well, if, if the idea is that this is kind of coming no matter what, how can people protect their privacy? Yep, so uh, using non-attributable devices is great. What you wanna make sure for you, you know, your personal uh, cyber hygiene is very important. Uh, doing things behind a VPN, using encrypted messaging apps. Those are some of the best practices to protect yourself. Are there any other specific uh, recommendations you would have? Yep, you gotta keep yourself uh, updated. Make sure you've got the uh, most current versions of all the software you're on. And every now and then hit a search engine and look at the type of router or modem you're using and see what vulnerabilities exist and if you need to patch them. Hmm. All right, well, thank you very much for joining me today. Thanks for having me, what a pleasure. Great. And if you'd like to know more about the surveillance activities the US government is involved in, check out my recent episode on our other channel, America Uncovered. The episode is called Coronavirus, now the government will be tracking you. Thanks for watching. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.